And welcome back in another edition of the Stripe Show podcast. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. The comebacks continue. First, Jordan Spieth. And now our man, Rory McIlroy, back in the winner's circle for the 19th time on the PGA Tour. His third, of course, at Quail Hollow, a place that he just absolutely loves. Uh, third win there, Wells Fargo Championship. Lots to discuss here. Swing changes. Big names back in the winner's circle. And we got a major championship right around the corner. And my friend, Golf Channel analyst, Billy Kratzer, joins me on the pod. Billy, thanks again for your time, man. How are you? Good, Travis. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, golf is uh, on fire. And, um, you know, rounds are up. The PGA Tour, uh, getting the fans back. I got to tell you, I was, I was just sitting there and watching the people congregate around 18. Rory McIlroy coming up the final hole. And I was like, man, I missed this. This is... This is really cool. And uh, I think it's fair to say that Rory McIlroy missed it too because the guy is an entertainer. He feeds off of this energy, doesn't he? I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, I think when you, if you look back and, and prior to the stoppage of play, mm -hmm. Rory was right there every week. Every single week he played, he was there. I mean, he was absolutely money. And we never want to make excuses for the stars. Um, but I do, I do think that, that, you know, he lost a little bit of that energy. Um, I'm not saying that he lost the drive or anything like that, but I do think that there's that, that energy. You, you've got a tiger, you've got a Mickelson, you've got Rory. You can't tell with DJ, obviously. Uh, Kepka, I think quietly, mm -hmm. I was off that as well. And so the, the, the big time players, they miss it. And, and quite frankly, Travis, I think it's a little bit of an advantage for them to have all the fans there. Uh, they don't want to, you know, go out there in anonymity and, Oh, okay. I just won a golf tournament, but nobody saw it. <laughs> uh, so they love the fact that, you know, the crowds, they can get loud. Um, they're shouting their names. Yep. It's all good. And, you know, so far as they're concerned, that drives them. That gives them an edge. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I think the advantage goes to players like a Colin Morikawa, a Victor Hovland, who when they came out, you know, all of a sudden it's more of that college atmosphere, right? They're used to that. All these people not around. Now they're going to adapt to that and be just fine. We know that. But when you're Rory, you're Tiger, you're Brooks, you're Spieth, People are following you, and they're they want you to win. They're cheering you along. That feels good. And Rory's had that his whole career. We know he's one of the most liked players on the PGA Tour and worldwide, for that matter. So it was just that you could see it in his face, and then you could hear it in his words how important it was for those people to be there cheering him on. I want to ask you about his swing changes, and I think it kind of it took us all by surprise when Rory was transparent and said, "Look." I was chasing distance. Bryson influenced him. I almost fell off my couch. I was like, Rory? Not Rory. He was chasing three yards. <laughs> I mean, look at his stats. I know. It's and crazy. Hill, the drive that Bryson hit on six, Rory was right there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm like you. I was, a little, I was a little stunned when I heard that. Yeah. So – so a lot of times what happens is, you know, they, you know, players start backing up, right? They, they start trying to hit up too much, more speed, club kind of gets wrapped around them and they just lose control. And they, the attack angle, I think, becomes detrimental, especially in the iron game. Now they can't get back on top of it. They lose control of the face and it's this block hook that you can't play the PGA Tour with. Now, Rory can hit the sweep and draw, we know, but this was under and the low lefts kind of like speed. All right, so he hires Pete, and we're just kind of back to more fade bias things, at least in my eyes. Nothing, this isn't like heavy lifting for Pete to go in there and say, hey, Rory, we're a little here. Let's be a little more here. <laughs> and when we're a little more here, we can get the path going a little more here. And all of a sudden, now the ball's going to do this, right? I mean, this isn't a heavy lifting thing. Although Rory was a mess, um, what would you see technically that maybe suggested some more fade looks off the driver. I just think, you know, in, in having a conversation with Pete, I've had several conversations with him about the golf swing and, mm -hmm. and certainly, 
you know, a longtime teacher of Stenson and, and you know, all the European stars. Uh, you look at Darren Clark. I mean, there's so many Westwood and, and on down the list, but they go in and out of form. I think there was more of a concern of becoming more uh, uh, neutral to where you're not so much from the inside to the out to where you are hitting that that big sweeper. Even though, you know, he may think that it's a little more inconsistent, I had him in my top five as, as best long drivers on tour, uh, even hitting the sweeping hook. But I do agree with, with the iron play. I, I felt the iron play, especially the wedges. Um, if you're not on top of it, and you're not flighting it down, it's difficult to judge the yardage. I, I mean, you can't you can't hit that looper that goes way up in the air and then comes down, and then you, you say, oh, I'm trying to hit it 119 yards. I'm trying to hit it 126 yards. Mm-hmm. No way. You have to allow for that, that initial bounce and then stop. Initial bounce, stop. And, and that's the beauty of Tiger. That was the beauty of Lee Trevino. Any good wedge player. Uh, by steros, you know, they all flighted it low. And I think, you know, um, for all intents and purposes, when, okay, maybe he wanted to be a little bit longer, um, then it started creeping in to the iron play, like you said. But um, I think just getting back to a little more neutral, it's going to feel like a fade. Yeah. He's hitting some fades, but I think he has to hit enough fades in order to get back to neutral. And I think once he does that, then you're going to see him hit a greater percentage of fairways. And when he starts hitting a greater percentage of fairways uh, with the improvement in the iron play, I mean, then that's Rory back to the guy who's won four majors and 19 times on the PGA Tour. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, a well, positive 6.9 strokes gain putting never hurts either. I mean, he magical. Yeah, unbelievable. When he when he made when he made the little left to rider down the hill. To mm-hmm. play- are at number 11 I, I i said you know what mm-hmm. he's gold right now he's gold that was a tough putt anytime you put across your body a meaningful putt short putt like that with greens the speed that they had at quail hollow that was very good yeah that was a that was a big time putt he made a lot of those in fact he was he was 38 for 38 inside six feet that's a big number um never for Rory. No. <laughs> uh, i mean that's that's just <laughs> never that's, <laughs> that's incredible really and you know rory's not labeled as a great putter right i mean we know he has his moments and he can be but he's had his struggles too we actually have brad faxon on the podcast on wednesday and it's perfect timing because i'm it'll be curious to hear brad's thoughts just on his routine also like because i don't think i've ever seen rory that quick getting up over it look look hit like it was just Something was different there, too. I mean, he was – I know he likes those greens. I mean, he's he clearly loves Quail Hollow, but he just – he looked like – I don't think I've ever seen him free will it. Let's put it that way, on the putting green as much as I did this week. And it was good to see. Because yeah. <clears throat> you, once you become entangled with, with all of the mechanics of the putting strokes and you kind of lose that reactive sense, then I think all of a sudden – you're, tr- you're, you're trying to make the perfect stroke, but yet now the word that, that leaves everyone in, in golf today is rhythm. So mm-hmm. now you lose rhythm with the putting stroke. Uh, you lose that feel, that pace. If you're ever going to read a green correctly, everyone will tell you that the only way you're going to do it is if you have the proper pace. And I just think it all lended itself to pretty much just kind of getting locked up with the mechanics of it. And I love the fact that you you take that quick look. You look at an Aaron Badley. You look at a Matt Jones. You look at Davis Love for years. I mm. mean, it was a boom, one look, and send it. And yeah. The, you know, they're great putters. And the thing about it, you can be, you can be a really, really good putter in professional golf. But I like the putters, the good putters, that are reliable. Mm. And what I mean there is Rory had that, that five footer slider down the hill needed to make it. He makes it, you know, Jack was always reliable. Tiger was always reliable. You, you get those guys in that big situation. Mm-hmm. You get them in a Ryder cup. 
Uh, for some reason or other, Ian Poulter becomes that reliable putter in that Ryder Cup format. So those yeah. are guys that I gravitate to. Yeah, it was it's there's just there's a lot there, I think, more than just, hey, Rory hit it better off the tee. His iron game was better, right? We know he was positive in strokes gain there, and he usually is when in his heyday. But I mean, a positive six point nine putting, he's got to walk out of there thinking, wow. I mean, if I can, I mean, he's not going to maintain that pace, but if no I one. can, yeah, if I can, if I can live positive two and three and putting and just keep this going and build on it momentum wise with where I'm going, I mean, you know, he's, he's, t he, he will be there on the last, he will be there late on Sundays. Um, trust me with that kind of, with that kind of putting. So it kind of caught me by surprise. I, I was a sitter and watching. I thought I, I, you know, what I saw is like, okay, that was different, you know, and then I watched it again and like, wow, that was really different. It was like, wow, I like this. This is, this is committed. This is as fast as I've ever seen Rory pull the, pull the trigger um, with the putter. Well, you make a point 38 for 38 from six feet and, and kind of the, the, the putt that everyone is measured on in strokes game putting is that eight footer, mm -hmm. you know? So, okay. You're, you're, 100% from six feet, the greens of regulation, you know, not all that great as well. But I just want to point out that, okay, he wins the golf tournament, bogey's the last hole, great bogey on the last hole. He shoots, <laughs> yeah. shoots 10 under. But you're going to have a strokes game putting number like he did when you have a score of 10 under that wins. And when you start looking at the driving part of it, Travis, Go back to Wingfoot when Bryson won the U.S. Open. He hit, he averaged like five fairways a day. Yeah. You know, so Rory's doing the same thing, and but he, he took it so deep down there that he was putting short irons in his hands. And then when he did miss a green, he, I mean, and the bunker play was just sensational. Yeah. I mean, the bunker shots he hit um, – on the par four, uh, let's see, 14, then then 15 right back at the par five. To hit those two bunker shots and to freeze them like that, mm -hmm. it was amazingly good. Yeah, it was all good. Yeah, it, it was all good. And, um, you know, Quill Hollow, we were talking about it in our our gambling show, Cash Out with the Coaches, which I know you know, Sports Pub and um, – mm -hmm. We were just talking like, look, this is this will be a this will be a a, a tournament where distance is going to have a major advantage here. And I don't think every you know distance we know has an advantage, but there's a lot of courses here where it's not as much as an advantage, right? I think that's overdone a little bit, but distance always does have an advantage, and I think that quail does. I mean, you can send it over those dog legs as they did, and okay, I'm in the rough. I'm going to miss a few more fairways. But it's okay. We saw with Bryson, these guys are strong. They can get it out of there. Um, now, you grow that rough up a little bit more, I think it's going to be a little bit different. But it, it's certainly, of course, those dog legs where you could just see these guys, big drives. I mean, downwind, 360 over these dog legs, 16. That drive on 16 was massive um, for Rory on Sunday. Covering the bunker at 320. <laughs> yeah, just, you know. No problem. So they're looking a little more to the left. And so yeah. it, it is an advantage and there are, there are big courses, but they, you also look at a Hilton head, you look at a colonial, you, you know, you look at the players um, in Ponte Vitra. Yeah. I mean, it's a positional golf course and yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got to have that mixture because not everyone can take it deep and not everyone can hit it accurately. And, and so it's a nice blend. Yeah. I think it is a good blend. I mean, Hey, Stuart sinks one twice this year age 47 now he's gotten a little bit longer albeit but he's not rory long he's not bryson long um but i think I, I think there is a good mix and um i'm excited for rory of course kiwi's won there it's coming up in two weeks um just so many storylines speed playing well i don't think j you know jt just got to get that putter fixed um and and get that cleaned up a little bit more we'll see what brooks can do this week leading into the pga John Rahm just maybe kind of stuck in neutral a little bit, you know, kind of a chilly putter trying to find his way. Um, there's just Hideki, you know, wins the Masters. And then there's Colin Morikawa, who we know can turn it on just like that and look like 
one of the best players in the world. Mm -hmm. He didn't play this week, but Victor Hovland did, um, who finished third. I just feel like Hovland, Billy, is bubbling up here. I mean, he's he, he looks like that top-shelf player to me who is getting better incrementally in some of his weaknesses. Uh, we know he can send it off the tee. We know he can be a good iron player. He's close. I think his short game is improving. I can see different shots around the green. Putter can be a little spotty. What do you what do you see with Vic? Anything you'd like to see him tighten up here to take that next step? And because we know he's close here to get that next win. Well, I think when you look at the big events, the way that he played at concession, obviously this is a big golf course, mm -hmm. and and I think I don't think there's we've defined where he plays best or or where he doesn't play well. I think he. I think every course suits him because he drives the ball so well. Uh, you mentioned the iron play. I think I think that continues to be good, especially when you start talking about the four through the, I'm going to say, eight iron, nine iron. Uh, the wedges can be tightened up a little bit yeah. as far as the full wedges. But I, I'm going to go back to 15 yesterday. Uh, he drove it in the right-hand bunker, tossed it down the fairway, had an awkward yardage. I mean, going up the hill, had 70 yards, tight pin. I, I mean, you have to hit it absolutely perfect. And he absolutely clipped it. It took one little hop, stop, and then drip towards the hole, makes birdie. I thought that shot right there, it was unavailable last year. Mm -hmm. That shot was not available for Victor Hovland. Yep. So he's done some really nice work. But again, and you and I talk about it a lot in the golf swing, you know, the guys that play above the plane where, you know, you have the plane and the swing going back and they actually play on top of that. Those guys hit it so solid 95% of the time. I mean, they are absolutely putting the face squarely on the ball every single time. The handle's not high. The toe's not flipping over. It's more of a just a kind of a cover with the right, and they play on top of the plane, and yep. and he, he can go at it as hard as he wants mm -hmm. and not lose it big. Yeah, I totally agree. And he, I think he's getting incrementally longer, too. I had his coach, Jeff Smith, on. We talked a lot in depth about some of the things with Victor. And, um, yeah, he, he does look like he strikes me as a player who looks like he could swing at it as hard as he wants. And there's times with his driver when he gets it going, he he looks like it's 100 percent on the gas. Um, there's there's guys out there. You can look at a Victor Hovland. You can look at a Si Woo Kim. If there's nothing out there that the ball can run into straight away, they just don't shy away from the driver. No. You know, I'm carrying it for a reason. I'm so good with it. I can I can use it to my advantage. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I mean, and, 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 and he does. And I think, yeah, I agree. I think that that 70 yard wedge shot, obviously some of the short shots around the green off the tight lies. Um, there was a bunker shot last week he hit that he really elevated up in the air to like four feet. I was like, that's a, that was a shot that you wouldn't see. It's weird to say that a, a PJ tour player like Victor Hovland is learning to use the bounce. <laughs> <laughs> around the green, right? I mean, in essence, that's what he's done because he's he's that flex player, you know, and he's trap, 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 trap. And he gets too much of that around the green and he chunks it. And then he, so it's like, he's got to learn how to soften it, get a little more extension in the wrist. You know, we're teaching this to mid handicaps, right? How to use the bounce and preaching that all day. But it's, it's that's what it is. And, and I talked to Jeff about it. It's like, you know, he's learning, you know, rotate the face a little bit more, let it slide, let it, you know, all these things. and. And all of a sudden, like, you know, you can see this elevation starting to kind of work up a little bit. The divots aren't as, aren't as deep. To your point on that 70-yard shot, just clipped it, went up there and had good spin. Um, yeah, I, I just think, I think when he's, when he's that top shelf player, um, when he's that, when he becomes that top shelf short game player, I just think from there, um, man, sky's the limit. All right, let me ask you about, Phil Mickelson. He opens with 64, maybe his best driving day ever. I mean, he was, 
hitting it long. He was hitting it straight and off he went 64. And then he goes 75, 76, 76 finishes uh, 69th. So, you know, Phil has the luxury, Billy, of playing kind of on house money, right? I mean, he's one of the best players of all time. Um, certainly in there somewhere, top 10, top 15, top 20, wherever you want to put him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a hall of famer and he's like, look, I'm going to, I'm just going to hit bombs. I'm going to keep up with these kids. He's competitive and he is going to go after the distance in the distance era. Do you think it's, do you think it's panned out for him? Right. Do you think the net effect of him getting longer, which he has, and he's, I mean, he had a couple driving. It's impressive, right? I mean, he's 50 years old and he's out there hitting a 320, 320. It's impressive. Yeah. But the net effect to the iron game and the rest of the game and the score, in my eyes, I look at it. It's like, I don't know. It really probably hasn't panned out net wise. What do you say? Well, I think if you, if you look at that, Phil throughout his career, and I think we can both agree on this, he's never been that accurate driver. Right. That's going to go out there and hit over sixty percent of the fairways, and he's he's just not going to do that. I think I think the the biggest thing I see right now, Travis, is the fact that uh, when he does miss, it's a big miss, and <laughs> yeah. and um, it's tough to recover. It's not just with the driver; uh, it's with the irons as well. Mm -hmm. And um, he's put a lot of heat on the putter. And I, I think it's just been a culmination of, you know, working so hard uh, on the full swing, uh, the bunker play, the short game. It, it's it's still great. You oh, know, yeah. When you still look at, at, at everything he does on the golf course, it's still great. And he can still hit the unbelievable shot. But I think, I, I think when, we, when I look at Phil – I know he's going to hit some errant drives. I know he's going to miss some greens, but I also know that he's going to get it up and down. And what used to be that, that four and five footer that was just kind of automatic for Phil hadn't been automatic. And, right. and it's been that way for a little over a year now. And we, we've seen him, you know, drive it poorly and, and still win a golf tournament. Yeah. I just think that unless the putter kind of gets back to – it's never going to get back to where it used to be. Yeah. But it just kind of gets back to where it's okay. Then I think he can be that player from time to time that can toss his hat in there and, and challenge it and maybe win a golf tournament. Because you look at the flexibility, you look at the strength, you look at the distance that he can hit it, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. I think he turns 51 June 16th. Yeah. But, you know, it's the putter. And, and those shots around the green, then that drifts over into what you do around the green, what you do scrambling and all that. But I actually think that, you know, a pretty easy cure for all ills is the putter. If the putter gets to where we're used to seeing Phil make these five and six footers with regularity, then I think everything else, kind of that pressure comes off of that, and then everything gets much better. Yeah, you just, you know, you look at the long hitters, right? And you go after that distance, and he, you know, he's, it's certainly impressive, but, you know, he's just not getting enough out of, I don't think, the strokes gain, you know, and, and from that statistical stat category, in trying to get the length, you know, he's losing strokes off the tee for the most part. And the approach game's been okay. It's been spotty at times. Um, but I think you're right. The putter has kind of leaked into the short game. He's probably not as good statistically as one might think, you know, strokes getting around the green. So there's certainly some, some pressure there. It's interesting. He's entertaining. I love it. I just, you know, it's like, it's, is it, he's, I know he's competitive and he, and he wants to show like the young guys, look, I'm coming for you. Right. Like I can still, it, you know, it's, it's an ego thing. I can hit it out there with you. Right. I mean, there's, there's, there's a little bit of that too going on here. I, I, you know, I love the fact that there was chatter between he and Joel Damon. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. You know, and, and I watched Phil, watch Phil a lot. I played with Phil a lot and 
you know, there's a there's a definite concern about the trail as to what it's doing. And, you know, he's always going through the rehearsal where the trail hand is is trying to stay away from the body and, and trying to get maybe a little bit longer to to maximize the width on the downswing. Mm -hmm. uh, I see I see him going through that rehearsal a lot. And when he's when he's on, I mean it is yeah you know, 64 and and it's there. But yeah. um as quickly as he can get it, it can evaporate that that quickly as well. And and that's <laughs> okay. Where, where can I find the middle? And that's we'd all love see to, to look you know for Phil to get to that middle. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think that if the short game that would allow him to get there, the putter's got to improve. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys that, you know, they kind of, they, they kind of pull down that lead wrist. They get a lot of extension in that wrist. You know, they, they need that width. Um, you know, you can see it with Gary Woodland who gets that, a lot of that down mm -hmm. cock coming down and who played well this week out of nowhere. I have no idea where he hadn't been playing good at all and hadn't played quite hollow good at all. And all of a sudden there's Gary Woodland with a chance to win. Um, but like those two guys are wider. They're always, they're out, you know, they, they don't want to feel that extension and that wrist narrow in tight. Um, and Phil is certainly one of the best players to ever play the game, game with that lead wrist coming in extended and, you know, kind of that narrow, a little steeper attack angle mm -hmm. and then being able to, you know, kind of swivel it and hit it. Stuart sinks, you know, is, is a little bit like that as well. Um, who's obviously playing very, very well. I want to ask you, Someone who's not like that is Spieth. You know, Spieth's always been that more flexed wrist, um, certainly not bringing it in this way, but more that way. But uh, Spieth, you know, he's back. Rory's back. Spieth's back. We get Tiger back. I mean, we, off we go, right? I mean, there's just, just get everybody, get you back. Let's get everybody back playing great <laughs> professional, <laughs> professional golf again. I mean, it's unbelievable. And, you know, I, I think... We've talked about it. No, I, I, I knew Spieth would be back. I knew he would because he's he still is the genius guy that knows how to score, even when he was hitting all over the place. He's still shooting even par and one under at times. I have no idea how he was even doing that where he was hitting it. Um, what do you think the turning point was, Billy, for for Spieth? Because um, this was this was a long stretch. I mean, you're talking three years here. I mean, we're talking big struggle too. I mean, not just with the putter. We know, but then the driver was a mess for a long, long time. Where, what, where was the turning point? Do you feel like where all of a sudden it was like, okay, well, maybe I just need to hit a fade off the tee. Well, it's, that's certainly a good question, and and you know there were championships, tournaments where he kind of teased all of us a little bit. Uh, he kind of put himself right there at Beth Page Black uh, when Kepka won. You know, then the third round. Didn't play that well, and then he came back and ended up finishing third in the PGA Championship. Um, you know, sometimes there's there's just that that one little thing that happens that they just make a decision and they're going to go with it. Heck, we're talking about Rory going to a fade. Um, but you know, it's well documented that that Butch, you know, he went to see Butch, um, you know. Sometimes you just need confirmation of what you're doing. Mm. Is that right? Is that is that right for me? And um, I think when you play with the grip that Jordan has, it's, it's it's a weak left hand. You know, it's turned over to the target side of everything. I just think that you know you really really have to make sure that you have everything in sync. And it's much easier, especially with today's equipment, that you can go ahead and you can hit a squeeze fade much more easily than you can hit that that reliable hook. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just think that it's it's just been a situation where he's had to go out there. Uh, we saw it at Pebble Beach. Um, you know, Phoenix, he kind of got in trouble in the final round. Um, but we saw it at Pebble Beach where the driving was a little bit better. And he continued this progression. And I thought the, the final round at Valero, you know, under the heat, under yeah. the pressure, I thought he drove the ball well. I think it's, it's, it's kind of a, a culmination of, okay, I've hit enough 
good shots, enough good drives that I'm able to actually count on that ball moving left to right. I can find my target. I can find my fairway. And even if I have to neck fade it out there, I can, <laughs> I can put the ball in the fairway. Yeah. And, and I think that's huge. And, yeah. and again, you know, you just need to maybe, you know, talk to a couple of guys. I just, you just can't play what I call coaching roulette that you can't go here. You can't go there and you can't go here. Okay. This is what I'm working on. What do you think? Boom. Move on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think I, I just been thinking a lot about it and you know, it's, it's, I think when you, these players are extremely, we know talented, the genius is there. The, uh, the competitive spirit is off the chart, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think most of them are pretty stubborn too, right? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not saying that as a negative. I'm just saying like that's that's part of why they're great, you know, too. That all kind of formulates into uh, obviously the work ethic and the talent and all of that. But I think when you start running into trouble on these ball flights and I think players want to see like they're used, that's what I want to see. And maybe someone's telling him, you probably need to go the other way for a while. <laughs> like, no, you know, like th th there's, I think what people miss is there's the human part of this that the player can push back to the coach and say, you know, I don't, that no, I'm not playing a fade. I don't want to get fade things in my swing. And I don't know if that's completely the case, but Jordan's no dummy. I mean, when you're under it and hitting low hooks, you know, like, why does it take so long to get to the point to where you're just now trying to go the other way, right, and hit little fades? Okay, but now all of a sudden you start seeing a DJ, a Kepka, a Woodland, all these guys, they peel it from left to right all day yeah. long. Yeah. That's all they do. And when you're a player that's hit it relatively straight or, or maybe a little right to left, you know, pretty much your career. And now all of a sudden you're seeing the success you're getting, you're not only seeing the ball move left to right, but you're seeing these guys hit it just massive distances. You kind of, you, you kind of start watching that. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And you kind of go, well, you know, I need to change. And then yeah. you get kind of caught in the crossfire. And, um, but I think Jordan, the fact that he just stuck his nose right in there, kept at it. Um, he's done a lot of hard work. Uh, you go back to 2017 when he was, I want to say, the second best iron player on tour statistically. Uh, we all knew it was in there. We just didn't know when it was going to come back out. And I just think that going forward, this was a huge weight off of his shoulders. Yeah. Uh, where he goes from here. I don't know. Yeah. Um, we're looking at a golf tournament, you know, in two weeks time, a Kiowa, if all of a sudden he goes, ding, ding, he's got all four of them. Yep. Yep. Just like that too. Just like that from, from not being, I mean, he wasn't really that relevant there for a long time. His name's always an attraction, but his game was so bad that you just kind of, well, you know, space. He kind of moved on pretty quickly, right? He's yeah. he's got a ways to go, and but and yeah, Sunday, you're right. And the Sunday, the you know the weekend, the Saturday Sunday thing, you know that can get into a player's mind. Um, certainly, it was there for Rory for mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, he didn't close the deal like he would have liked, um, but it's amazing. Yeah. All of a sudden, you just we've got. Spieth, we got Rory going for five. We got Spieth going for the Grand Slam. Um, Woodland, like you said, out of the blue, maybe he's going to get his second major. I mean, there's a lot of factors in there. And, you know, who knows? South Carolina, DJ, maybe he gets the third leg of the Grand yeah. Slam. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many great stories in the next few weeks. Yeah, there really is. It's, uh, it's exciting. We got the Byron this week. Then we go to the PGA and, and we're really just getting started. I mean, then you start getting into June and my goodness, I mean, we start running off some, some really good tournaments there in July. And like, you know, you got the U S open, the open championship, Jack's tournament, the another WGC, the playoffs. And Oh, by the way, this little thing called the Ryder cup um, that 
usually um, is pretty exciting to watch too. <laughs> this is, I think, in the super season, I think we're on our 33rd week. 30, yeah, 33rd yeah. week. I mean, you know, we're just a little over, you know, 60% done. So, yep. A lot of golf. Yep, there is. Well, Billy, I know you're busy. I know you got a full slate golf channel this week. Thanks for um, jumping on the podcast. We'll do it again. Enjoy it, Travis. Okay.